the Pillow Marketers, Professor Walters here, and do you want to make products that are spectacular failures? Of course not. And how do you not make a failure? Well, you learn from other people's mistakes. And so today what we have for you are some of the most spectacular product failures that have ever happened, okay? And, and the first off, I think we need to start with the granddaddy of them all, the one that when you say its word, it signifies failure, and that is the Ford Edsel. Now, the Edsel came out in 1957, okay? And the idea was, this is the next great car. And so the idea is, the next great car it needs to be something completely different. Yeah, I know people like beautiful cars that run well, that look great, and all this kind of stuff, but let's change all that. Let's make a car that people thought was super ugly and doesn't deliver on the expectations that we set out there for being the next great car from the Ford company. And the thing is, the Edsel only made it in production for four years, and then they're like, yeah, this is a total failure. We gotta get out of here. And from then on, if you ever call anything an Edsel, it means it's a total failure, okay? Now, that's from the 50s. That's a long time ago. What about more recent kind of stuff? Well, well how about this? What if I gave you a clear glass of bubbly liquid. You'd see it and think, oh, 7-Up, Sprite, it's gonna be that citrus kind of stuff, maybe some bubble water. Now imagine you take a drink of that and it tastes like cola? Whoa. Well, guess what? In the early 90s, Pepsi came out with Crystal Pepsi. The idea was, is, hey, you know, if we make it look clear, it'll look healthier and people might like it. And so we could sell this kind of like a, a diet healthier version of cola. But let's be honest. When you drink a cola, you know you're not doing anything healthy to your body, okay? So the market for that is wrong. But also, you have to think about how people see your products. I mean, think about it. When you see a dark-colored, bubbly drink, you're like, oh, it's going to taste like cola. Whereas if it's clear, you're like, oh, it's going to taste like lemon limey, probably. And people's minds just could not accept that, all right? So just, just know that it does have to line up. And so that was a complete failure. Though they've had a resurgence lately in kind of like the, the vintage market. So sometimes you can still find that Crystal Pepsi in the weird soda sections of some stores. And the thing is, I remember when it came out and how popular it was when it first happened. And this is where you gotta be careful because sometimes new products are huge at the beginning because they're like kind of a cool thing, cool new thing. But after a while, people realize that this, this just, just, just isn't for us. I remember at the end of Crystal Pepsi, they were literally giving away 12 packs. Like, oh, you bought a pack of gum have a 12 pack of Crystal Pepsi. I remember using it as a backstop for the door in my dorm room to keep the door open. And it sat there the whole year holding the door open. Now, our next failure, I mean, this one, you think it would be a great idea. I mean, who doesn't like yogurt in the morning? I'm here on South Beach and on Miami Beach and just enjoying the weather. I'm feeling healthy, being out in the cool breeze. And you know, a good morning yogurt really helps the body movement going and you feel healthy when you eat it, right? Well, what if we took that yogurt healthy feeling and put it in your shampoo? In the late 70s, Clairol came out with the Touch of Yogurt Shampoo, which had, you know, yogurtiness in the shampoo. And the thing is, is it sounds cool, like, oh, yogurt is healthy, it'll make my hair healthy. But in reality, people could not disassociate yogurt with breakfast stuff that smells horrible if you leave it out overnight with shampoo that's supposed to smell a different way. And the thing was, is apparently some people actually ate the shampoo because the smell, I mean, hey, at least it smells good, but yeah, yogurt, shampoo, people do not associate those things together. So you gotta be careful with that. And that kind of association problem might come up later in our list. Now, next on our list, you 90s kids might remember this. That's the Easy Squirt Heinz Ketchup. Remember when there was like purple Heinz ketchup and green Heinz ketchup and the, the, different, the different color schemes? Well, think about it. Think of Heinz, what are they thinking? Hmm, kids eat Play-Doh. Play-Doh is multiple colors. Let's come out with ketchup in multiple colors. Yes, it was popular at first, but turned out to be a big failure because the color purple is not appeasing to people. It's like, what's wrong with my hot dog? Especially when they had the mystery color kind. I mean, look, I'm already eating a hot dog. There's enough mystery in the hot dog itself I don't need mystery in my ketchup. So that was another failure for, you know, from the early 2000s. Now, next on our list has to do with an adult beverage that decided to take the adult out of its beverage. So Coors is a the banquet beer, right? And so Coors talks about, oh, the Rocky Mountain waters, the, the, the spring waters, everything that makes our beer so good. Well, what they did is they took the beer out of their beer and decided, you know what? Let's just sell Coors Rocky Mountain spring water. But the thing is, if you buy a Coors, you're buying a beer, not 
spring water. And now think about it. How many kids you think got in trouble for drinking Coors water? Like, hey, kid, you can't drink beer. Oh, look, it's Coors spring water. Look, people could not disassociate Coors with beer, so there could be some issues there. Now, my next failure is summarized in two words. Anal leakage. Yes, folks, we're talking about the wow chips. We're talking about Lay's healthy potato chips. We're gonna make it in a way that it's better for you so you don't have all the icky stuff that comes along with potato chips. You can feel good about eating the whole bag of potato chips now. Hmm, seems like a good idea, but there's one problem. The Olestra fat substitute they used caused diarrhea in people. But you can't say diarrhea, so you gotta make it you know, sound fancy. <clears throat> May cause anal leakage. And there's nothing I want better with my lunch than a bag of food that causes anal leakage, right? So yeah, the well chips didn't really last very long, okay? So, so something to think about. Remember, anal leakage is bad for products, okay? <laughs> Now, another, the next thing I'll do is, is the, 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 probably the example you learn in every marketing class, the biggest marketing new product failure out there, New Coke. So Coca-Cola, the world's most iconic brand, decided, you know what, this soda that's been doing great for like, you know, 100 years, we should totally change the flavor to try to get some of these Pepsi people to start drinking Coke. Now, we could make another version of Coke. Nah, let's change our old-time recipe that everybody loves and that people drank with their grandparents on the front porch and tell them, forget you. Well, yeah, you think it's stupid, but they did do that. And New Coke was a disaster. I remember people protesting when New Camp Coke came out. They're like, bring back our Coke, bring back our Coke. And what's crazy is New Coke was taken off the market after 70 days, and they brought back Coca-Cola Classic. And that is probably the best, like, return Lazarus marketing thing ever is when they got rid of new Coke and brought back co normal Coke. But well, we couldn't call it old Coke. They came back with Coca-Cola Classic, which was a huge hit. And Coke has never looked back, though every marketing student ever goes through that new Coke case. And the big problem was is they didn't listen to their core customers. Now, the conspiracy people will say, oh, maybe Coke did this just as a marketing ploy. I would hope they wouldn't spend all those millions of dollars for something like that, but, but that's another failure you really should know. Now, our next product failure is one that I think is important to really, really kind of appreciate what they were trying to do, but it was destined to fail. Now, I love Cheetos. You love Cheetos. I mean, heck, there's like even like a Netflix movie or something going to come out about the guy that made, you know, invented the uh, these flaming hot Cheetos. But the thing is, we love the little cheese, like, um, uh, you get the little cheese particles on you. There's a word for that. I can't think of what it is, but there's a word for the dust. It's like, uh, mm, you can't get enough, right? So people love Cheetos. They love Cheetos dust. And people love lip balm, right? I mean, I'm in the sun. I need to have some lip balm on so I don't get chapped lips. But what if I had Cheetos flavored lip balm? Yeah, no, no, no. Cheetos is a snack. What is the core of the product? Cheetos is a snack. Lip balm is something you don't eat. Though many toddlers probably think they need to eat it. No, it is a lipstick kind of thing. It's a chapstick. You do not <laughs> mix those things together. And that goes back into putting two totally different types of products together that don't relate, okay? So Cheetos lip balm, early 2000s, did not quite make it. But you can still find I'm sure if you go on eBay, you might find some old stuff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get it, but it's out there. I mean, come on, it's Cheetos. I can understand what they were thinking. Now, my next product failure I want to talk about is from Colgate. You know, Colgate, the company that makes your toothbrushes and, and your toothpaste and maybe get some dental floss from it or something like that. You know, Colgate, right? And the thing is, Colgate, I think they decided, you know what? We need to backwards integrate into people's daily lives because you finish off your day brushing your teeth before you go to bed but what's the thing you do before that you have dinner and colgate came out with kitchen entrees like seriously they had meals imagine colgate meals i don't know about that that seems a little strange like my toothpaste is making food for me maybe they should have gone with a different brand name than colgate with that one because nobody associates Colgate equals Salisbury Steak Day. Now, you gotta think about what your brand really means, and that's why some companies, when they develop new products, they will actually come up with a new brand name to sell it under that. Now, next on our list, this is another one of those great ideas. Hey, let's make a less good product than our competitor and charge more for getting the stuff you want on it. Hello to Microsoft Zune. 
Okay, so the Zoom, remember, you know, your, your phone now plays all your music and plays all your stuff, but back in the day, you needed an iPod to play your music, right? And so you'd have all your music on here and, and listen and stuff. And, and Microsoft wanted to get in on that. Like, hey, we'll come up with our own stuff where Microsoft will be a success. And so they came out with the Microsoft Zoom. And it came out and it didn't look anywhere near as cool as the iPods. And, and they actually charged like 50% more for the songs on there. And people were like, you know, you're not really cool. And, and why would I pay an extra 50 cents for a Madonna song or a REM song or whatever? It's back in the day. You know, like, why would I pay 50 cents more for the same song when I can listen on the iPod for less? And it was a disaster. They actually stopped making it after they lost over three billion dollars in a couple years okay so didn't quite work out now my next product failure i want to talk about is another one that i like to share with my my students and you can look up the ads online and that is the mcdonald's arch deluxe this is a problem where it was you got to realize who you are and when you think mcdonald's you think we are the value menu we are the cheap fast food place for people well, the thing is, McDonald's wanted to change their image and make them seem more adult, more fancy. So we would come out with a fancy burger. Look, if I want a fancy burger, I'll go to like Culver's or a bar or someplace that has like fancier burgers. I go to McDonald's because it's cheap and it's fast and it's standardized. And what happened is they actually spent over $100 million on ads to get the Arch Deluxe out there and to get people excited by it. But it ended up hurting them overall because they started advertising all this more expensive food and if you're thinking wait is mcdonald's expensive now and they had to like advertise hey we got a discount on the big mac to bring people back so remember you know who are you right if you're mcdonald's look you're cheap you're fast you're standardized that's that is who we are you go out of that lane you can get into trouble all right so there was a failure there another one which takes me back to my childhood is the Betamax. Now the Betamax versus VHS tapes. That's when, when I was a kid, that's how you'd watch the Disney movies, right? You put the, the tape in and, and watch there versus streaming now. But Betamax actually versus VHS, Betamax had higher quality video, higher quality audio. It should have won the war versus VHS. But just like when you're a toddler, if you don't share, you get in trouble. And Sony did not share the technology for the Betamax. They said, I could do it myself. Just like every toddler, and every parent will tell you when the toddler says, I can do it myself, a disaster follows. And that's what happened. JVC, which had the VHS system, they licensed that stuff out and anybody could make it. And that's why we all had VHS tapes and Betamax, though it had better quality, did not go as far, okay? And it, and it did collapse. And my last one I wanna talk about is a product that was so lit, or they tried to make it so lit that it burst into flames. And that is the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Back in 2016, Samsung came out with a phone, you know, a, a Galaxy Note, like bigger than a phone. And it was a popular model, like it came out, but there was a problem. It would occasionally overheat and burst into flames. I remember flying around Europe and we would get on the planes and they're like, if you have a Galaxy S Note 7, please, you know, let a flight attendant know and get it off the plane. You couldn't take it on a plane. I'm like, it's for business travelers. The business travelers can't travel with it because it bursts into flame. Yeah, if your product bursts into flames, like the hoverboard stuff, you don't want to have that, okay? So do be careful with that because major issues like that, yeah, I can pretty much signify that that product is not going to be a success. So what are some other huge product failures that you've seen over the years? Put it down in the comment section below so people can learn from other people's mistakes and we can have more successful businesses. Anyway, I'll say bye from here on South Beach in Miami Beach. I wish you all a great day. Bye.